Hi, thank you for joining me for part two of the series on electromagnetic radiation dangers in your home. In the first segment, we looked at light bulbs and we also took a look at microwave ovens as well as the radiation from cell phones and cordless phones and baby monitors. In this segment, we're gonna take a look at the radiation from wireless computers as well as the circuitry in your walls and radiation that comes through the walls in your home. These devices are measuring various forms of electromagnetic radiation. And basically, when the device makes a sound, gives its audio feedback, when the noise comes, that means we're in the danger zone. Okay, we're out of the safety zone and into the danger zone. And that's because these basic household items that we're gonna be looking at and the radiation that comes from them has been linked to a whole slew of health problems, starting with brain tumors and other forms of cancer, including leukemia, um, also impaired immune system functioning, impaired nervous system, impaired brain functioning, and also does damage to DNA. And there's been studies that show that guys that carry their cell phones in their pockets have lowered sperm counts. So headache, fatigue, I mean, the list goes on and on. I spend a lot of time in front of my computer at my desk and I have a wireless modem and my computer. So we're gonna see what happens when the modem is on. Then we're gonna try this really interesting solution to put this metal bread pan over the modem because metal blocks microwave frequencies. So let's try it. That was a really dramatic change. You could tell from the feedback of the sound that we went from a really high level of radiation down to a very low one. So the solution is cover your wireless modem with something metal like a bread pan and then just use the cable to plug in to the modem. The best solution would be to buy a modem that is just hardwired, not wireless. If you can find one, please buy it because they're stopping making these. It's another problem. So what am I doing in bed? I am not asleep on the job. The fact is we spend most of our time at home in bed sleeping for hours and hours every night. So this is a good place to start to see what's going on while I'm asleep. So I'm hooked up to this device that's measuring my body voltage. So I have the electrode in my hand and the meter is saying that my body voltage is running at about four and a half, 4.5. And you need to pay attention on this meter to that decimal point because it's a floating decimal. And so what's, what we're gonna try now is, Yeja is down the hall at the breaker box and he is going to turn off the breaker switch to my bedroom to see if there's any difference when he throws the breaker. So, Yeja, do you want to turn off that breaker? Yes, I do. Here it goes. Whoa. So he just turned off the breaker, and as you can see, we have a drastic change here, and nothing else has changed in the room except that breaker on, breaker off. And it's not like I have a lot of uh, other electrical things happening. So, Yeja, can you tell me what's going on with this meter? So what happened is that Deborah's body voltage dropped from 4.5 volts to 0.58 volts or 590 millivolts. That's a huge change. So why did it drop so much? Well, our bodies are electrical in nature, and when we are exposed to any type of electrical field, that changes our 
body voltage, our body electricity. So apparently with the circuit on in the bedroom, there is a large enough field that it affects your body and your body voltage is, goes up to four and a half volts. Without those electric fields, which we eliminated by shutting off the breaker, your body voltage drops to under 0.6 volts. So that really means that when I'm in bed sleeping at night with no lights on and no fans running and no nothing, nothing running in my bedroom, that I'm still being exposed to that kind of radiation. That's what that means? You are still in an electrical field even though nothing is running. That's correct. Wow. Sounds like I'm in trouble. So what's the solution? Shut your breaker off. That's what I do. To be sure that you are not going to be exposed to electrical fields, eliminate them. So we're still in the bedroom and I used to have my bed against this wall and I couldn't sleep. Then I realized that there's an electrical meter on the other side of the wall. So I moved my bed. Yeja, let's see if there was any reason for me to move my bed. Well, let's measure what's happening with this uh, meter that measures electric fields. Now when I turn it on, not only will it give it a digital display, but it also gives an audio signal as well. And as we can see, it's very high. That's because the electromagnetic field that's present on the other side of this wall penetrates through the wall as it can through the ceilings and through the floors. What's on the other side of the wall is just as important as what is in the room. Good thing I moved the bed. Yeah, moving things three to six feet away from sources like that is the ideal thing to do. That's the solution? That is the solution. Thanks. Yeja, I just really want to thank you. I mean, this has been so eye-opening and just unbelievable. Thank you so much for coming over to my home and bringing all of these amazing instruments that show all of the dangers. I, I really appreciate that. Well, thank you because I welcome the opportunity to be able to share a little bit what I've learned over the last couple of years. Maybe it will help someone. Thanks, yeah, hope so. And thank you for joining me. I appreciate you watching the video and please visit my website for more information, yourenergymatters.com. And on the website, I have a free report. It's called Cell Phones and Your Energy, but it's about all kinds of other radiation issues as well with lots of tips and practical things that you can do uh, for solutions. You can also on my website, check out my book, Endless Energy, The Essential Guide to Energy Health. And there's other resources available as well. Thank you so much again, and aloha from Maui.